because we're talking about youth sports and we're not talking about really high school or college, you know, it's very important that in these tender years, you want to be able to motivate through being helpful and making constructive suggestions because intimidation, belittling uh, is, is not going to be effective at, at all. And so it's very important for parents who may believe that their child is talented or even for the coach who's trying to motivate through fear of failure, it's not going to work. It's going to have the opposite effect. And if anything, if that's going to undermine a child's self-confidence, they're still learning how to play these games. And as Jason Taylor said, hey, we don't get it right every time. So, you know, why are you going to be so hard on a kid who's just learning whether it's how to tackle, whether how to, you know, throw a pass, whatever the sport may be. You, you have to have that latitude to be accepting and, and so the child can accept him or herself. We, you know, we created a chapter basically on failure because uh, a lot of parents are afraid of their kids failing and they're afraid of how it reflects on them when their kids fail and they're living vicariously through their kids and so they see this as some kind of shortcoming on their own part um, and they don't treat the kids in a way that makes the kids feel like they can recover from it. And we, so I went to a lot of athletes to ask that question, what was your biggest failure? And they were extremely happy to talk about it, mostly because they felt almost uniformly again that it was a defining moment in their lives. It did not take them long to come up with the examples. Um, and so we have numerous examples from Chipper Jones leaving the bat on his shoulder when, he's, when he was in a championship game to Shane Battier shanking a punt in front of 70,000 people in a punt pass and kick competition to Chris Mullen who would go on to the Hall of Fame scoring on his own basket when he was nine years old. And what we got from them on a consistent basis was that somebody was there to tell them that it was all right. And it didn't mean that it was all right to fail and that you shouldn't try to practice and get better, but that failure is a part of sports. It, it, it is, there's a winner and a loser in every situation. The best baseball players in the world uh, don't get hit 70% of the time. Uh, the best quarterbacks in the world don't complete 40% of their passes on a regular basis. And the whole idea was getting that message across to the kids that you're going to fail again, but next time you want to give yourself a better chance to succeed, you have to practice, you have to put in the time, and, and that's what we got. And now I'll turn it to Andrea. What I think will help parents is, again, to understand that for every game that's played, one team's going to win, one team's going to lose. Now, children in elementary school and early middle can be very concrete thinkers, meaning they see things in black and white. So if they lose, they feel like they're losers, but losing doesn't make you a loser. And it's very important that parents make that point to children. Yes, your team may have lost, but there can be always something constructive or positive that they can point out. But look, you got to the second base or look how many baskets you got to shoot, or how many minutes you played. So, you know, what they have to find is within the game, things that they can bring out and tell their children to help their children not just define it in these all or nothing terms. You know, there's gonna be games where the team wins and the child didn't play well, or the child played superbly and their team lost. And they have to be able to take away from all of these situations and so rather than having a child fear failure and be so afraid of their team losing, in a way we, you have to embrace it. You have to help them understand it is going to happen, it's going to be okay, there's going to be another day and you're going to go out again and you're going to play. And so rather than being something to be afraid of and avoid, look at all the lessons that you learn. You need to learn how to be resilient. You, want, you don't want to just give up and quit because everything that happens truly on the playing field is a metaphor for another classroom, whether it's in school or later on in life. So you have to learn to deal with adversity, you have to learn to deal with difficult situations such as a loss and a defeat, but it doesn't mean you're defeated. It's just a game. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.